Hi, I'm Jessie Allender, registered dietitian and professional chef, and mom with two here at home during the coronavirus lockdown. We're in Chicago, it's May 17th, it's pouring rain and kind of cold, 54 degrees when we were out, um, but you know, we're making do. So today I've got some cooking projects and nutrition projects and doing like prep work so that I can have things ready to go during the week because we're still really super busy with our distance learning, Zoom school, um, Zoom preschool. Uh, I still, I work from home, I see my clients online um, and to make all of that happen and have some balance, um, I cook a lot more on the weekends. I spent most of the day cleaning the kitchen because it needed a scrub down inside and outside of the fridge. It's so important to keep the fridge, I think, to keep the fridge um, organized and have everything in it uh, where I know where that it is. Um, and so, but it got away from me and I needed to clean it. And even like if I just wipe up some or scrub down or empty the shelves and scrub them down when they don't have scraps or spills or little drops of this or that, even if it's one or two drops, I feel like when I open it and it's clean, it's just refreshing. Uh, it's decluttering, right? It's, it's not even clutter. It's a little bit of, you know, the grape juice spilled or the leaf, you know, the onion skin got left on the shelf from the onion bin. And anyway, so I got that all scrubbed down. I got everything scrubbed down and it feels really good. And today uh, I'm going to do all things chicken. I've got a whole chicken right here. Um, and like, that's why I tell it. Don't, don't be chicken. Don't be afraid of chicken. Woo, that flew. <laughs> Here's my chicken right here. I've got a whole chicken and we're gonna cut it down and we're gonna do different things with it. Uh, a whole chicken sell for considerably less money than uh, chicken parts. When, when we're, I mean, we're paying for somebody else to cut the chicken into parts and that's why it's more expensive. It's the same quality chicken, but it's already been cut and so you gotta pay for that labor, which is totally fair and please do it if you can afford it. If um, this, this chicken in particular came from a food pantry that I'm frequenting because my income has been cut um, so dramatically that I need to look into my community's resources. And I'm not chicken. I'm not a chicken about it, and I don't mean to be harsh. Um, but, you know, it's kind of terrifying to reach out and say, I need help. Um, uh, to reach out and say, I don't have enough for my family. I need to look for all of my resources. Um, and so that's where this chicken came from. It's a whole chicken, which I love. And you could certainly, you know, take a chicken like this, put it in a pan, salt and pepper, put it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes or until the internal temperature is a, about 170 and the juices run clear, um, 185 depending on your school of thought. Um, and, and, and then, you know, that's a wonderful meal. It can be turned into chicken salad and then you can take the roasted bones and made a, make a soup or broth from them. I prefer to make my broth uh, from raw bones and so that's what I'm gonna do today. So I'm gonna break down the chicken and I'm going to do several different things. I'm going to go over them really quickly. I'm going to make, um, I'm going to make uh, a broth uh, for noodle soup, Chinese noodles, Chinese flavor. So in that is going to have um, a hand of ginger um, and about half of this sweet onion. And along with that, we're going to put in some uh, black pepper and some white pepper and some salt. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with the chicken bones when I get there. I'm also going to take the chicken legs and thighs and wings and I'm going to put them over on my, whoops, that's too close, extreme close up on my uh, roasting pan, trying some technology here, on my roasting pan um, and get those uh, all roasty and delicious and I'm going to do like an Italian sausage uh, flavor on that. So for that, um, I've got some seasonings and we'll go through that. And then uh, lastly, I'm going to take the chicken breasts. Uh, and I'm gonna take the bones off of them and I'm gonna slice them thin and I'm gonna marinate them for stir fry. Um, they'll, they'll spend the night in the fridge for stir fry and then I'll be able to cook those uh, tomorrow with some broccoli and some onions and some carrots. Uh, maybe some red peppers if I um, get my another order from the store. Um, uh, I just gotta start by saying thank you to all the people and organizations that are helping me and my family um, get through this time. Uh, the support has been magnificent and in so many different ways. Um, I don't want to call you out, but you know who you are and I'm extremely grateful. And if you want me to call you out, just let me know next time. I'm going to do special uh, cooking shows for you guys. Uh, anyway, so here's my chicken. But before I touch my chicken, chicken is inherently um, 
uh, dangerous raw chicken. Like it can have uh, pathogens on it. And so we always want to be super careful when dealing with raw chicken. So I've got it, uh, it was frozen when I got it from the food pantry. Um, and so I took it out and put it in this pink bucket in my refrigerator and let it thaw for three days. It's now thawed and I'm going to put it back here on the side. And I'm going to first get all of my vegetables ready um, for the different places that my different parts of my chicken are going to go. Um, so for my Chinese broth, I've got a hand of garlic and, um, oops, okay, I'll get out of the shot. I'm going to drop the phone real quick because that's what YouTube is good for. Um, there we go. Let's just make that a little bit, a little bit smaller. Bear with me, folks. Okay, never mind. Um, so I've got that, and I'm going to go ahead and take um, some of the skin off of it with my with my peeler. In and out, in and out, making everybody seasick. <laughs> How many minutes is she going to spend getting her camera angle right? Right? Okay. Um, there we go. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. I know. Bear with me. So I'm just going to break this off and get some of the skin off of it, of the ginger. There's a lot of things uh, you can do with a whole chicken, uh, you know, and the different parts cook at different speeds. So you want to be uh, conscious of that. And the chicken breast, the white meat, uh, tends to cook the fastest and get the driest. Um, and that's why it's a really great um, piece of chicken for the stir fry. Uh, the legs, the thighs and the legs are, you know, they've got more fat in them and they've got the bones in them and I will cook them with the bones. I've got my oven uh, preheated to um, about 400. And once I get those seasonings on there, they'll go ahead and get cooked for our dinner tonight. Um, uh, and uh, I'm just doing the wings and the, and the legs and the, and the thighs for that. So there we go, getting all of this off of there. You know, and then, like I said, you know, you, if you, you, when, you're, when you're looking at chicken and wondering why, you know, the skinless, boneless uh, chicken tenders are, you know, $9 a pound, and the chicken bone-in thighs are $5 a pound, and the whole chicken is $3 a pound, it's because of the work that goes into making each of those available. Um, when you have somebody in the back of the house um, cutting the chicken and cleaning it for you, you know, we gotta pay them. It's the same thing like with restaurants. For, you know, if you're in a place where the restaurants are back open, if you feel comfortable going, um, you, know, you know, they're probably gonna have to raise their prices and they might have to raise their prices considerably. A lot of restaurants are faced with um, having uh, reduced uh, dining room capacity um, and they still you know they have to sell food at a reasonable price but they have to you know sell the food it's like the rent that has to get paid so the luxury of going out to eat at the restaurant is, is I, I, if I was running a restaurant right now I mean I'd be charging a premium uh, for space inside uh, because it costs me more and it also like I need to pay my workers more because you know they're basically doing hazard work um, even if, you know, with all the PPE in place, it's still going to be, um, an issue. All right. Um, there we go. You know, when you're peeling ginger, you can rub it, you can leave the skin on it and just wash it. Um, for this, I wanted to get most of the skin off just because. There we go. I'm going to cut that into a rough chop. And I'm going to beat it up. <laughs> Here we go. And I put that in the pot. There we go. Ginger is so pungent and, and delicious and uh, full of flavor. And it's also got some great uh, qualities to it. One of the things that it's used for mostly medicinally is it's an anti-emetic. That means it stops the feelings of queasiness or nausea and can limit the amount like when you have a, a vomiting disease, you know, some, some like uh, food poisoning, it can, it can help you regain control. Um, 
So it's a really great um, aromatic to keep handy. Here's an onion. I'm only going to use about half of this giant, beautiful, sweet onion. That is delicious. Get the uh, skin off of this. There we go. Um, and that's that's the basic aromatics for what I what uh, the Chinese the way I learned how to make a Chinese style um, chicken stock. There we go. All right, so that's ready. Next, I'm going to make um, my herb rub for my. Um, Next, I'm gonna make an herb rub for my um, roasted chicken. Uh, so here I have my mortar and pestle, and I'm gonna add some thyme, a whole bunch of thyme. I'm gonna add some fennel. These are seeds. A teaspoon will do, less than a teaspoon. Um, it would be really typical and wonderful to add some um, red pepper flake. I'm not going to because I avoid chili, chilies for my safety. But I've got some rosemary. This is rosemary I bought fresh uh, from my delightful Hyde Park Produce, our delightful. And um, I'm just going to crush that a little bit as I put it in here. And then I just hung it up to dry it. And then I would typically put some oregano in here, but I'm out of oregano, so I'm going to do a little bit of basil. And then I'm going to do some um, kosher salt right in with the herbs so it's ready to do the rub. Let's see how much. About a teaspoon? A little bit less than a teaspoon. There we go. Salt. All right. Uh, I'm going to crack some black pepper in there. I know I could just put the whole peppercorns in and grind them, but you know, since I have a way to grind the pepper, why not just go ahead and get that done? There we go. And then I'm just gonna do this to get the rosemary and the fennel all pulverized. Oh, my rosemary's leaving! Don't leave me, rosemary! There we go. Oh, that smells so good. The fennel is so fragrant. I love the combination of fennel and rosemary. Hey, buddy. I'm hungry. You're hungry. You have snacks on the table, buddy. I know you can't see him. Please don't. But he's here. He's set up watching the show. She's set up in the other room watching the show. You know, we're all doing our best in these times to take good care of our kids and, and get something done with our lives you know things we work if we have it um, I'm able to do that most afternoons um, when I plug them into their shows all right nice and pulverized here have a look all right so I'm going to dump that into this bowl and let that hang out until I have the chicken parts for that I'm going to put this away All right, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a marinade uh, for my chicken breast, and this is going to be a stir fry. Uh, I want again a Chinese flavor to that. Uh, I don't use soy sauce, so I've got some um, coconut aminos. They're a little bit sweeter than soy sauce, and not very salty, so I'm going to add some salt, about a tablespoon, and then I'm going to do um, two tablespoons of roasted sesame oil. Um, and this is the pouring bottle I use, but I buy it in a big can in Chinatown or in an Asian grocery. Um, I find I save a lot of money when I do that. Um, so about two tablespoons of that. And then um, white pepper. Nice and spicy. And some salt. And then when I cook it, uh, when I cook it later, that's when I'll add like garlic and ginger. Um, so I get those aromatics in the pan. Um, uh, but these are the flavors that I want to soak into the meat. So I'm going to put that aside, put my onion away. All right, so I'm going to make this a little bit, nope, not smaller, bigger. There we go. Hello again. Um, so now I'm going to cut the chicken. Now I feel ready to cut the chicken. I'm gonna put this knife away. Um, this is the knife I use uh, to do um, 
uh, anything to do with like taking uh, meat off of bones. And sometimes I just use it to trim meats because it's my meat knife. Um, and since I'm, I've already got everything prepped, um, I'm gonna keep the different dishes open so that when I come across that particular cut of meat and I can go ahead and trim it and get it into its respective uh, place. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my bones in here as they come up. I'm gonna put my chicken breasts in here after I clean them up. And I'm gonna put my um, dark meat parts in my uh, bowl. So I'm all set up to do my different things. Um, I'm gonna get the rest of these out of the way so that they don't get any cross-contamination, any chicken splashes or anything on them. Uh, it's important that you know you get everything in its place and that includes having things out of their places or uh, not in the way. Um, so then we can go ahead and since there's some chicken juice in the chicken bag that this came in, I'm going to work in the bucket for a little while to just minimize exposure. Hey beautiful chicken. All right, so here she is onto the cutting board, which I will scrub down later. So uh, the wing tips have been cut off. I have no idea why people butcher it that way, like why I take that off, but they do. Um, and so I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm going to break the joint uh, to make sure that it's easy to cut off. There, I heard a little pop. I'm gonna go from the bottom to cut this wing off. You get all the meat associated with it, but leave the breast alone. There is a chicken wing into the roasting blend. I am not adjusting the um, uh, camera again because now my hands are covered in chicken. So. Okay. Two chicken wings. And then I am going to, um, uh, the way I like to do this when I'm taking the breast off the bone is to start um, actually, I'm going to start with the, I changed my mind, I'm going to start with the breast. And since I'm not going to have the skin on it, I'm going to go ahead and, and open the skin so it's not in the way and I can see what I'm doing. There's the two chicken breasts. There's a lot of connective tissue here, so I'm going to trim that, open it up. And the skin is actually going to go into my stock pot. There we go. Take off that excess fat and I can go right in there. Um, all right, so here's my two chicken breasts. There's a, there's a breast bone that runs down the middle. Um, and that's how I'm gonna um, separate my two uh, chicken breasts right off the bone. Um, I was trained to take the, um, the wishbone or the collarbone out first. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna cut on an angle here and over here, and I'm gonna pull out the wishbone first. I'm gonna pull it out in bits, it seems. There's the rest of the wishbone that is out and now I'm going to cut my uh, chicken breasts off of the bone. I'm going to go straight against the central breastbone down to the ribs and then go under and keeping all the meat together. Now I've got, I've got this easy because um, I'm going to be cutting it up into bits for my uh, stir fry so I don't have to be too careful about keeping the um, muscles together. There you go. One beautiful chicken breast with the tender. Okay, and then I'll get the other side. So here's the breast bone, right? And so I'm just gonna get to the other side of that. I'm gonna hold it nice and tight. Keeping as little, trying to get as much meat off the bone as possible. I mean, it's going into a stock, so I don't need to worry about it too much. But, um, you know, always, like, if you feel like your angle's starting to get wonky, if you 
feeling out of control, then you know shift your shift your angle. Don't be afraid of going slow. There's a bone down there, so I have to get that cleared. All right, there we go. Another beautiful chicken breast. So these two, I'm gonna go ahead and slice them for my stir fry. I'm gonna take this extra fat off of here, put that in my stock. I'm gonna trim any connective tissue. Hey, bunny. How's your movie? Good. Good. What are you watching? I'm watching Super by the Dozen. All right. So let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and take the chicken tender off. There we go. Uh, and then I'm going to take the other chicken tender off. There we go. And then I'm going to split this in half. Here's a bit of connective tissue I don't want in my stir fry. A little bit too rough. And then I'm going to cut this into stir fry slices. Nice and thin. This will be a a la minute. Uh, for dinner tomorrow night. I've got some frozen broccoli and I've got some multicolored carrots um, And I've got onion and green onion and I've got some cilantro. So we'll see what goes in there We'll see where I end up That's just frozen. There's still it's still yeah, after three days in the fridge the center of this chicken is still just a little bit frozen But you know this just chicken breast meat, were it purchased in the store, would be um, the most expensive piece. And so if you're buying, if you're trying to economize and you're shopping for food, um, I think it's definitely worthwhile to start learning, you know, especially if, if you're out of work or if you've got more time on your hands looking for a new hobby, uh, learning how to um, debone and, and prioritize a, a, a fresh chicken um, I think is a, a quality endeavor because um, uh, it'll save you a lot of money um, and that's uh, something everybody I think is trying to do. Uh, yeah. All right, that's good. So again, so this part over here of the breast uh, it was he it was here or no this one was here no this one was here yeah that's where the wing was this one was here um, and this part over here is is you know there it's thick it's there's different thicknesses and that's that's what I'm basing my cuts on also I'm basing my cuts on I want to do a little bit against the grain of the meat um, for the slices uh, so that it'll be nice when I stir fry it So yeah, I really uh, I cleaned up my oven, uh, my, my my kitchen today. I scrubbed it down. I, I got into the cutting board uh, or the drain board. Uh, I scrubbed the stove down on top, and I actually got to um, clean the inside of the oven, especially the window, because my daughter. When we're baking or making pizza or something, she's always um, it's uh, there's you can't see in because the window was all clouded, and so I cleaned it. And I I had never um, I always used like commercial oven cleaners and stuff when I clean chick when I clean the oven. And today I did the baking soda method. I just put some baking soda down and uh, uh, scrubbed it with a plastic scrub brush, and uh, it came really nice and clean with just a little bit of elbow grease. Um, so that was really kind of awesome, uh, and it felt good to do, um, and it felt good to use a, a relatively, uh, you know, unprocessed, I try to keep our lives as unprocessed as possible, um, uh, so, you know, that we can, um, stay clean and stay healthy. So here we have, uh, this is the carcass of the chicken. I still have my saddle on here. Uh, and what I like to do when uh, to get the meat, the legs off, is I again like to break the um, joint. So I put my thumb on top of the uh, 
um, right there. And you can see the oysters. I'm going to talk about the oysters. Here's the oysters right here, the chicken oysters. Uh, it's uh, equivalent to the um, filet mignon on a cow. Uh, it's that muscle at the back, um, and it's really tender, wonderful meat. So I put my thumb right where the joint is underneath, and I press until it pops on each side. Okay, so my bones are out. You can see that the bones are out. Here's the, here's the leg bone. I know, right? Gross chicken bones. Well, if you don't, if it, this is grossing you out, then watch something else. Um, not apologizing. So I'm going to take as much meat as I can here off the bone. I'm going to go the, under the oyster so that I get the whole thing, and I'm going to pull. And there is my, with the oyster intact, there's the oyster right there. And then here's my chicken bone. I'm going to separate my thigh from my leg. I'm going to find the joint. This one I don't crack. I just, uh, I, well, let's see. Let's go in this way. There we go. So I cut the, if you get to the, if you hit it at the cartilage, it slices right through. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the rubbing bowl. I'm going to put this little uh, nugget into my, my stir fry bowl. Here I have um, my, uh, I'll put a little bit of dark meat in my stir fry. I'm going to cut that off because it's loosened by itself. Put that in here and the skin in here. And then I've got my thigh. Here, it's gorgeous, that's gonna roast up beautiful, but I don't need this extra skin, so I'm gonna cut that off and put it in my stock pot. And the same on the other side. I can go from, you can also do it from the other side, where you wanna get up, this is the rib cage, and this is the thigh bone, and you wanna get up right in there, and then go under the oyster, right against the bone. Oops, didn't do it beautifully. Oh well, mistakes will happen. There we go, pull that off. Um, and then I've got my thigh, and I'm going to, again, do it from the outside so that I keep my skin nice, my chicken skin nice. Go right there, cut that leg off, wrap the skin around, put that in there. Um, got a lot of extra skin on here, <clears throat> so I'm going to trim that off. And I'm going to leave this the way it is and get that in the rubbing bowl. And then what I have left is the chicken carcass. Here's the breastbone. This chicken came with its neck. This chicken did not come with giblets inside. Uh, there's quite a bit of meat on here, and that's all gonna, when I, after I boil this, I'm gonna pull all the meat off. Uh, this is the Pope's nose. I don't know if you watch my other shows, but this is the part that's called, it's the tail feathers. It's where the tail feathers attach, and it's full of bones and gristle, and it's delicious when it's roasted, and that's a treat for me. So I'm gonna cut that off and put that in the roasted, because I like my chicken parts. I am going to break the back, pull it apart, so I have two pieces, so it's a little bit easier. And I'm going to put that in my boiling pot. And there you go, a broken down chicken. So I'm going to clean up. I'm going to add water um, and black pepper to my uh, stock right here. My hand's on the inside. I'm going to rub my chicken with the rub that's in there. I'm going to roll them over. I'm going to put them on the sheet tray and bake them in the oven. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead and mix this with my dirty hands because they just got chicken on them. So I'm going to mix this all together so I get my marinade on all parts of my chicken. And then I'm going to close it up and put it in the fridge. And then I'm going to scrub down my counter with soap and mild bleach solution uh, to make sure that everything is nice and clean for my next project. It's going to take me a minute till I can turn off the camera because my hands are covered in chicken, but I really appreciate uh, your time and attention. Uh, that's how you break down a chicken. You can save a lot of money breaking down your own chicken. And you can also appreciate the work that goes into it so that when you see it has a higher price, back of the hand, back of the wrist, see the face, throw things on the floor, hi there, uh, so that you can appreciate uh, the effort that goes into breaking down a chicken and, and what you're paying for. Um, I really Mommy. like, yes, baby. Mommy, he, he, keep your hand he, out of the garbage. Mommy, he and Mickey Mouse Clubhouse hate Toodle, so that's why he drives his hand to the black Oh, okay. Oh, and hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, my joy. One of them. Um, yeah, so I really appreciate uh, everything that's going on here. Um, I'm so grateful that my community... Uh, our community at large is uh, helpful and supportive um, and helping us in these times of need. 
and um, let me know. Hit subscribe down at the bottom. You can see, I think it's a red box. Uh, you can catch all my videos when I post new ones. Thanks so much, and uh, have a blessed and wonderful and safe and hopefully warmer than Chicago day. All right, take care. Bye.